Oh, God bless Nigeria. Uh, this country throws a million challenges in your face every day. If it's from traffic, listen, if you cook for a living, you don't want to get stuck with food in your car in traffic. Hi, I'm Chef Amatera of Heels in the Kitchen. I'm the head chef there. And Heels in the Kitchen is a food service company that does everything from private chef services to meal delivery to TV shows. Food is also my life. Everything I do is centered around food. Find of all social activities, eating is the one that connects people the most. Um, you know, it's really funny. I didn't get into cooking until I was maybe about 27 years old, something like that. Um, I'm old, by the way. Um, I was never big about food. It was just something you ate. Uh, but I used to be a makeup artist. A lot of people don't know that I was a makeup artist for about eight years. And sometime during my makeup journey, um, I had this idea what I thought would be a good food show. So I had this idea that it would be great to incorporate all the things that I really love, which was makeup and shoes and everything, into a cooking show, because I was watching them in the cooking show. So I came up with the idea of Heels in the Kitchen. It was meant to be a cooking show. And um, at some point, I was talking to my dad while I was a makeup artist, and he was just like, you talk a lot, you should be on TV. And then he told me if I had that should go and come back with a TV show and he would fund the pilot for it. And I was like, actually, I don't have to go anywhere because I have this idea for a TV show. So yeah, my dad said he would fund the pilot for the TV show. So I showed him Hills in the Kitchen and he really liked it. And then he was like, okay, if you're going to do this, you have to do it properly. So I did. And it's funny because I only went to culinary school just so I could do the TV show and just because he insisted I host it myself. But while I was in culinary school, I realized that I really, really, really loved cooking. And I loved the stress of the kitchen and I loved all the high tensions and I loved just watching food happen. And so I came back and yeah, I decided to start doing this professionally. So I left makeup behind and I haven't looked back since. Being Nigerian and including Nigerian food in a lot of my cuisine. I didn't used to do that when I was cooking. I would do strictly French food or strictly Italian food because that's what I learned. But now I'm doing Nigerian fusion, like there's no topic that's off limits. Um, so that really, uh, I've really grown in that way and that excites me and I'm looking forward to seeing how much more I will grow. Um, some of the most difficult challenges are the obvious power issues. You end up spending a lot of money on generators or a service place so that you can have power for your fridge and freezer. Because if you're doing food, you need to be able to hold them at proper temperature. So you need that. That is the major problem. Um, another problem is the difficulty of procuring produce. Um, Nigeria grows a lot of amazing things. Like out in Joss, they're doing strawberries, they're doing all sorts of fruits and vegetables. The roads are bad. So as a chef in Lagos, I can't get it here. Now I could move to Joss because a lot of people are like, hey, why don't you just move to Joss because the food is there. Yeah, but the clientele is not there. So what am I moving to Joss to do if there's no work there, but the produce is there? I'm living in Lagos where the work is, but the produce isn't. So there's no synergy, there's no balance there. Uh, you know, the produce is over here, I'm over here, and the roads and the transport networks are just too bad for us to be able to reach each other. So there needs to be a whole overall of the logistics aspect in Nigeria, the transportation, the roads, even our air flight, it needs to be cheaper because it doesn't make sense for me to have to spend about 150k on the flight to get stuff back and forth, you know. I think the one thing that I've learned, and obviously it's been an overtime thing to not compromise on in the kitchen, is making a list and prepping in order. And it's really funny, but I find that once you do that, everything else falls into place. If you're not running Helter Skelter, then your kitchen is going to be neat because you're going to do things systematically. You're going to do things in order so you give yourself enough time to clean in between um, I also don't compromise on the produce that I use it's got to be fresh it's got to be clean it's got to be hygienically sourced I'm not buying stuff I don't buy my meat on the side of the road where any car could have put its exhaust on it um, I have my suppliers particular suppliers the person that supplies me my meat I've been to her butchery I've seen that it's clean I've actually entered it like okay let me see how you clean everything. Um, so yeah, I don't compromise on working with a list in order because I find that hygiene, um, just general kitchen etiquette, if you're doing things in an orderly way, everything else kind of falls into place. 
Uh, so I think coming up in the next five years, Nigeria is going to start having a much bigger impact worldwide with our cuisine. All right, thank you for joining me. I'm Chef Imateda, and this is my food story.